morning, everyone. Uh, so yesterday we introduced how do we balance redox reaction. Uh, we had to balance in terms of number of atoms and also balance for charges. We want to make sure that there's no free electrons in the full equation. Uh, so just for a quick uh, one more question here, I'm going to ask you to practice balancing. I want you to balance this reaction as written. So this is going to be As2O3 reacts with nitrate NO3 minus becomes H3 ASO4 and N2O3. Um, they may state to you, oh, balance it in acidic conditions. We're always going to do acidic. If they don't state it, just assume that it's acidic, meaning uh, you can have H plus in the overall equation. Uh, they're just going to say balance, so totally up to you whether you use half reaction method or oxidation number method. Uh, I would encourage you just pause the video, try it out for yourself, and then when you come back, I'm going to show you both methods just for comparison. Okay. So first method that we did in detail here was half reaction method. This one here involved separating the two parts, balancing the bits, and then lowest column multiple and just putting it back together. So how do I separate half reactions? Probably the arsenic compound will become the arsenic compound. So let's do here. This is probably As2O3 becoming H3AsO4. Uh, the nitrogen-containing compound NO3- minus becoming N2O3. Uh, in your practice problems, you may have seen sometimes you actually had three products. Maybe I had another. I don't with this example. Maybe I have another nitrogen or something like that. For a half-reaction method, just try to put all the similar elements in the same half equation. We have this method here. This method I usually refer as the brute force method. It works, but it is very, very many steps. How we do this one, we're going to balance off the major atoms first, balance off the oxygens with water, balance off the H's by adding H+, and then balance off the charges by adding electrons. Don't forget the step of balancing for major atoms, anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. So for example, I have two arsenic. I only have one there. Right away, I need to double it. I have one nitrogen, two there. Right away, I need to double it. That's the first step before you do anything else. Next, what we're going to do, because a lot of these reactions take place in aqueous, we're going to then add waters to balance the oxygens. So on the left-hand side, we have three oxygens. On the right side, we have two times four. We have eight oxygens. So that tells me I need to add five waters to the left-hand side. Um, let's do the uh, O's on the bottom one as well. So two times three makes six oxygens. I have three there. I'm going to add three waters. There's no like sort of rule, oh, you added water to the left side. The other side has to be water. It just depends on the exact half equation. Uh, let's then add the H pluses, uh, because we're going to assume we're in acidic conditions. Let's match up the number of H's. It's the total number of H's that I care about. So I have 5 times 2, so 10 H's. I already had 6 H's. How many H pluses I'm going to add is just 4 H pluses. On the left side, I had no H's. On the right side, I had 3 times 2, so 6. I'm going to add 6 H pluses. Right? So just balancing in terms of number here, just carrying through the charges as a very last step. Because these are half equations, you can then balance in terms of uh, electrons. So the total charge on the left side here is no charge. On the right-hand side, we have 4 plus, so I'm going to add 4 electrons. It's at that point you can tell me whether this is oxidation reduction. If electrons are on the right side, this is now the oxidation half equation. Who got oxidized? It's the reactant that is involved. This uh, AS2O3 compound was the one that got oxidized. Uh, basically, oxidation is a loss of electrons. Arsenic took its electrons and passed it over to NO3 minus. It's the N in the nitrate that got reduced, but we still state the whole compound. NO3 minus is put through reduction. How many electrons does it gain per uh, reaction here? Total charge on the right side is zero. I have six plus minus these two here is plus four. And I'm going to add four electrons, and there we go. So nicely here, um, normally you'd need to do lowest column multiple. Well, which what does four and four go into? What they both they just cancel each other already. They're already set up to cancel, and now all you do is you put everything on the left, on the left. Order doesn't matter, so I'm going to put 5, water, it reacts with uh, As2O3, and 6H+, and 2 nitrate. This becomes 2H3AsO4, 4H+, and 2O3. Because I balance both halves separately, when I put them back together, this should now be balanced. Uh, I might end up having sort of waters on both sides. I, I do in this case here. I have five waters and three there. Let's cancel this, make that a two. And then I have H pluses. I have six H pluses and four there. Let's get rid of all those ones and let's make that a two. Clean that up a little bit here. I have two water and As2O3 plus two H plus, two nitrate, 
uh, becomes 2H3ASO4 and N203. Uh, always good to check your work. Uh, generally, I don't have time to check for numbers as well, but usually I tell people, you know, if you check charges at this point, we've gone through so much detail. If your charge is balanced, you're probably okay. So I have 2 plus here, 2 minus, so total charge is 0. Total charge is 0 on the right-hand side. We're all good. Okay. Again, on the um, exam, they're just going to ask you balance. It's up to you whether you do this half reaction method. Just for comparison's sake, I'm going to show you the oxidation number method. Uh, this is what we did towards the end of yesterday's class here. Um, this method here is a nice shortcut. We're not actually having to break up uh, half equations, but it's a little bit, people would tend to make more mistakes, and I'm just going to demonstrate what that uh, mistake very commonly is. So uh, let's start off with our equation again. We have uh, AS2O3 and NO3 minus. H3, ASO4, and N2O3. Okay, so same equation. All they're going to ask you is just balance. Uh, we're going to still check for the major atoms. There's no uh, skipping that step here. If I have two arsenic here, I only have one arsenic there, I need to put a two. I only have one N, two Ns there, I already need to put a two here. Just make sure your major atoms are balanced. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to find the oxidation numbers of absolutely everything. So the oxygen here is negative two. There's three of them negative six. Two of them to cancel out, so arsenic is going to be plus three. When I do the arsenic in this compound, I'm just dealing with the one molecule, so don't worry about the coefficient. In this one molecule, the oxygen here is going to be negative two, negative eight total. The H is plus one, sign first in the number, that's a plus three. So the arsenic to cancel out the charge, the arsenic has to be a plus five. We know that the change of arsenic is going from three to five, the change itself is plus two. That's what we sort of ended off with last day. But if I just drew a picture here, you'll notice this compound here actually contains two arsenic ions. On the other side here, we have H3. Uh, we have two of these groupings. There's an arsenic in the first compound, arsenic in the second compound. Because oxidation number is defined per atom, when arsenic goes from here, it goes from a plus 3 and then becomes plus 5. That one here has already gained by 2. But I actually have two arsenic atoms that are undergoing this change. This other arsenic will also undergo that plus 2 change. This change here is already going to be uh, plus 4. So even if I just run the reaction just once, I already would have lost the equivalent of 4 electrons. Okay? That's the part that people typically miss. They just do the change, oh, 3 to 5, oh, it's just 2, and they start trying to do the lowest common multiple. Let's try it for the other one as well. So the N2O3, the oxygen here is negative 2, times 3 is negative 6, so this N here is like having a plus 3. Remember, this is not a real charge, it's just something that I as assign to it, just so that I can predict whether it's oxidized or reduced. Uh, the N in the other compound, again, it's per atom, so don't worry about the coefficients outside. The oxygen here is negative 2, there's three of them negative 6. The nitrogen here is equivalent of plus 5. Yes, the change for nitrogen is going to be 5 to 3 is going to be minus 2, but in the very same manner, I have two nitrogens that are undergoing this change. So it's like going from an N at plus 5, another N is plus 5, that one has dropped by 2, there's another N that also drops by negative 2. So in total, this is actually going to be a negative 4 change. So even before you try to do any lowest common multiple stuff here, we already had to do these. Uh, just running the reaction once, already gained 4 and already lost 4. And if these numbers at this point here didn't match, then you do lowest common multiple. Let's say this had been negative 5, then you would go, oh, lowest common multiple is going to be 20. Let's times everything involved with the plus 4 by 5 and the other one by 4. In this case here, lowest common multiple is already 4. Just like we saw that the electrons already cancel out earlier here, we're perfectly good. The electrons are already all accounted for with the numbers that I have already. Then what you're going to do, don't just leave it there. You still have to add uh, waters to balance the oxygens and then add H+. Plus. The only difference here is I'm going to be adding it. Let me just rewrite this equation for you here. I'm actually adding it to the entire equation all at once. In the past, it was, let's break up the half equations. Let's just add it to the halves. This one here is the entire equation. It's both the uh, reduction and the oxidation reaction. We're going to add, let's count up the number of oxygens. I have three oxygens here, two times three, that gives you a six, so I have nine oxygens. On the right-hand side, I have two times four, so eight, plus the three, I have 11. So that means I need to add two waters to this side. And then I'm going to add, in terms of H's, I now have two times two, so four H's there. I already have six H's there, no other H's, so I'm going to add two H plus. Totally okay, we're in acidic condition, so okay, we have an excess of H plus around. 
And if you just match it up to the one we had earlier, this should be an exact match from before. It also does a nice simplification. Because I didn't break up half the equations, I'm not going to have, oh, water showing on both sides, H plus showing on both sides. Uh, it's a little bit more simple in that fashion. So try out both methods, whichever you're comfortable with. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to actually start taking a look at doing these redox reactions, um, starting off into uh, the voltaic cell, cell section. Um, and we're going to uh, introduce sort of the spontaneity of a redox reaction. Uh, make sure you have your data booklet handy here. We're going to need table 24. Uh, we'll uh, refer to it uh, very shortly. So starting off here, uh, what is a redox reaction? Right? Remember, a redox reaction is sort of two halves. The other line says GER, so oxidation. There's one thing that loses electrons, while the other thing gains electrons. The important thing for us is to realize that there can't be any free electrons in nature. Um, so unless there's someone willing to pick up the electrons, um, the first guys aren't going to oxidize. So for a redox reaction in general, uh, you usually have one guy oxidize, one guy reduce. Uh, I can say that in terms of here, we usually have an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. Right? So as an agent, it helps something else get oxidized. Turns out, if I'm the oxidizing agent, I usually get reduced. I usually gain electrons. And what we're going to do, because we've broken up sort of these half reactions, we can refer to each half as a half cell. So it's composed of a uh, reduction. That's what happens to the oxidation agent itself. Uh, the reduction and an oxidation uh, half cell. Okay. Uh, it's important to note uh, that for a redox reaction, will occur spontaneously or not. Uh, let's imagine a strip of PB metal, a strip of aluminum metal, mixed in solutions. Usually when we do these first cells, if I have lead metal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick lead metal into a solution that contains lead. For the time being, let's just put them all in one beaker. We're going to see very shortly I need to separate them into two beakers later on. But what we have here is we have two pieces of metal. We have aluminum and we have a uh, lead metal. Again, you're going to see very commonly if I have aluminum as this is going to be known as an electroplate, I'm probably going to have aluminum ions and I'm probably going to have, since the lead electrode, I'm going to have lead ions as well. So what we do here is I'm just going to put them all together. Uh, over time, you are going to see some sort of corrosion. There's indication that a reaction is occurring. I just want to predict which reaction is it that's going to occur. So let's just think through the possibilities here. Uh, we have a piece of aluminum and we have a piece of lead and the ions. Usually what we're going to do is we're going to check our table. Our table actually quotes it as standard reduction potentials. So I want you to show me the equations as reductions. So show it to me as gains, gains of electrons. So for example here, if I have my aluminum ions, if they're going to gain electrons, how many would they need to gain in order to become aluminum? Well, aluminum here has no charge, I would need to have three electrons. Or, in contrast, the lead plus two can gain two electrons in becoming PB. That's how you're actually going to see it on the table. So I've actually proposed to you two possibilities. I propose them as uh, reductions. Turns out all these reactions on the table are actually reversible. While it may be a reduction, if you read left to right, it's actually going to be oxidation if you read it uh, right to left. Okay, So just keep that in the back of your mind here. Obviously, spontaneous would just be one of these directions. Um, in order for us to identify which reaction is going to actually reduce or who's going to oxidize, similar to our acid-base chapter here, um, chemicals differ in terms of their ability to donate, in this case, your electrons. And what our table actually gives us here is it gives us who's the strongest at gaining electrons, who's the strongest at uh, losing electrons. So again, just look up table number 24 here. These are all written as reductions left to right. That's why electrons are all on the left-hand side. That's fine. And what they've done for us here, we're going to see this potential a little bit more in tomorrow's lesson, but the potential actually describes for me how easy is the reaction going to occur. And in fact, for the reductions, it's actually upside down. If you look at the chemical that's supposed to be reducing, they're trying to confuse things. They're trying to say, oh, it's the oxidized form. Well, this is before being reduced. Of course, it's oxidized. In fact, it's actually the lowest on the left side. That's actually the strongest. If I read left to right, F2 has the strongest ability to pick up electrons because it gives me the best positive voltage. So the strongest guy, so the strongest at reduction is actually the lowest down on the table. And as you get higher and higher up, for example, we see R2. I see aluminum plus 3, I see PB plus 2, 
as they go higher and higher, you notice those reductions are possible, but their voltages are a little bit smaller. This is only negative 0.13, this is even negative 1.66. Again, we'll talk about why the negative later on, but basically I'm losing my ability to reduce as you go up. Um, usually I would say, oh, it's the strength of the reducer. Reducer is not a word, so we have to use the correct terminology. Uh, we actually have an increasing, this is strength of oxidizing agent. Again, let's just translate that for ourselves here. Well, the oxidizing agent, you help someone else get oxidized, you normally get reduced, perfect. This is your ability to reduce. If you're really good at helping something oxidize, you're going to also reduce well. You're going to reduce with the biggest voltage, okay? So the strongest one going forwards, that means even though the reverse is possible, there's no 100% uh, reactions in this section here, even though the F- minus does have some ability to come backwards, because this F2 is so good at gaining electrons, the F- minus really has a hard time going backwards. As my reduction is getting worse and worse, we're going to find that the oxidation is going to get steadily better, and we're actually going to need to flip the voltage around. So based on this table, you always have the table with you. Although these are, we have aluminum ions, we have lead 2 plus ions here, although both of them potentially could reduce, who reduces better? It's the one that's stronger. It's the one that's lower down on the left side. Because I run into lead first before I run into the PB, I'm just going to quote the voltage for you, 0 0.13 volts, whereas the other one here is only negative 1.66 volts. PB plus 2 is actually the stronger um, at reducing. So you can say here, PB plus 2 is better at reducing. So alumina is out of luck. If anyone's going to pick up electrons, it's going to be PB. Okay. So aluminum ions actually end up as spectators. They're still going to be in solution, but they're not going to do any reaction. Now, what about the oxidation? These guys, the PB2 plus is ready to gain electrons, but who's willing to give up these electrons here? It's actually the electroplates, the aluminum or the lead. Who's better at oxidizing now? Now, while PB plus 2 as an ion was better at reducing, you'll notice the best guys at oxidizing, the strongest guy oxidizing is actually the one that's furthest up the table. Remember we had said, if I'm not really good at going forwards, that means I'm really good at coming backwards. So in fact, the strength going the other way, stronger uh, reducing agent, or they're stronger at oxidizing, they're stronger at taking the reduced form, actually oxidizing over, we actually find aluminum and we find lead. Aluminum is actually higher up on the right-hand side, so this one here is actually going to be stronger, better at oxidizing lead. So while we had said aluminum ion is actually weaker than PB ion, the aluminum metal is actually stronger than the PB. So those are the two things uh, that are actually going to react. Uh, in fact, even though the table is written as a reduction, we're going to rewrite that later on. We're going to say, well, al when aluminum actually manages to ditch these electrons, aluminum is going to become Al plus 3 and 3 electrons. It was negative 1.66 for the reduction. If I undo that, that's actually going to be a positive voltage, 1.66 volts. More on the voltage later on. So here's what we've done again. We check the table. We want to look for exact matches. So um, we had all four of these ions here. We found that between the PB ions and aluminum ions, it's the PB ions that can actually gain electrons. So PB ions are going to react. These ones here are spectators. Between the aluminum metal plate and the PB electrode, aluminum actually reacts better. The PB is actually just going to stay there. This is just going to be a spectator. It doesn't do anything. So what's actually happening here is aluminum had a bunch of electrons. Aluminum is going to jump off into solutions. Aluminum is going to create new Al plus 3 ions. That is not the Al plus 3 that was already there. It's going to create new aluminum plus 3. Because this is an electroplate, it's going to actually drop off electrons on its plate. Right? Uh, electrode as a conductor is temporarily able to conduct these electrons. The lead ions, which are better at gaining electrons, the lead ions swim up close to this aluminum plate. It grabs two electrons and actually solidify out to become PB. Again, that has nothing to do with the PB plate already. We're actually going to solidify out chunks of PB on top of this aluminum plate, and that's actually what we're going to observe in solution. So let's just flesh this out in terms of details here. Uh, all these half equations in table 24 are written as reductions. As you descend the table, as you go downwards, the oxidizing agent, this is the guy that itself gets reduced, uh, oxidizing agents increase in strength. So it's actually strongest in the lower left corner. And reducing agents, so reducing agents are the ones that get oxidized. If I'm actually getting better at going forwards, I get weaker and weaker and coming backwards. These ones here actually decrease in strength. So pretty much separate for yourself. The strongest guys that are reducing is the lower left corner. 
the strongest guys that are oxidizing are the upper right. And what we're going to do throughout this sec uh, section here is we're going to start from the top left, the best guys reducing. And we're going to go up, find our first match. In this case here, we find lead before the other one. Oh, aluminum is uh, out of luck. It's a spectator. On the other side, start from the top right, the best guys oxidizing. We find aluminum is good at oxidizing, and then comes lead later on. Okay. So uh, the higher half cell on the table, uh, we have this equation. So this half here. Uh, the higher one here is actually the aluminum reaction. And it's the aluminum that's actually going to undergo oxidation. Right. It's actually the aluminum electrode, that's your reactant, that's actually going to go to the left. The lower half cell, so the equation that I'm looking at is this PB half cell. Um, this one here is the lead half cell. I'm going to specify lead 2 is actually the chemical that's actually the reactant in this case. The lead 2 half cell is actually going to undergo the reduction. And just case in point here, as we look more at the table, if ever you find that the reduction reaction, this one happens lower, than the oxidation reactions, that's going to be spontaneous. Sometimes, when I'm looking at my table, sometimes we do start from the bottom left, you find your match. Okay, it's this reaction. You start from the top right, you want to find your match here. When these two lines actually go, like, kind of, they uh, go past each other, when the reduction occurs higher than this, this is actually going to be non spontaneous. Okay? So, we're going to see this uh, in upcoming lessons with electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells, but pretty much all the cells are going to use the exact same table. Uh, some metals have more than one half reaction, so make sure you choose the correct uh, half reaction. Um, so let's just take a look in more detail. For this one, it's not too, too bad because I only see the lead ones, I only see the aluminum ones. We'll see more examples of this later on. Uh, but let's just write it out. Now that I know which one's reducing, it's going to be the lead ion. I'm going to write it as a forward arrow. On the table, it could have been either way depending on what your mix and match is, but this is actually lead ion. One way arrow becomes lead. Again, the voltage, as we're going to see, that was quoted as a negative 0.13. Going in reverse here, we want the aluminum. Although I had aluminum ions and aluminum solid, it's the aluminum solid that's going to get oxidized. I'm just going to rewrite that. Aluminum becomes Al plus 3 and 3 electrons. The voltage needs to be flipped. This was negative 1.66, and going left to right, going right to left, is actually going to be a gain of 1.66. You'll notice these half reactions are already balanced for you. Obviously, the ones that are going to ask you to balance are not going to be on the table. But seeing as it's already balanced, we just need to do the one last step here of lowest common multiple. Because my final equation cannot have any free electrons, I do, what do 2 and 3 both go into? Well, 6. Let's do this first reaction 3 times. Let's do the second reaction twice. And therefore, we have the whole balanced equation. When 3B plus 2 reacts with 2 aluminum metal, becomes 3PB, and this becomes 2 aluminum plus 3. We'll even do the overall voltage. I'm going to use E0 as a symbol for it. 1.66 minus the 0.13 gives you 1.53 volts. This is a positive. That's also going to indicate to you spontaneous. Okay. So just over the next page or so, we're just going to keep using this table here, uh, but do a few what ifs. This first one here, what if we only started with aluminum metal and P, uh, uh, PB metal? So PB and we have aluminum metal. So this time we have no ions involved. You can still check the table, right? So let's check the table for exactly what we have. This time, because we don't have the ions, when I'm on the left side, when I see PB2+, plus, I need to skip over it because I don't have PB ions. I just have PB. So in this case, I have nobody that's willing to pick up the electrons. Both the aluminum and the lead are both on the right-hand side. Both are willing to lose electrons. Both want to ditch their electrons. Aluminum is actually better. But if no one's willing to pick it up, uh, there's going to be no equation. So uh, there's going to be no reaction because no one gains uh, released electrons. Both of them are willing to uh, release electrons, but there would be a bunch of free electrons in nature that would be unstable. And similarly speaking, what if we had a solution, no electrode plates? What if we had the plus 2 and the aluminum plus 3? Now we wrote the reactions earlier. The PB plus 2 is willing to gain electrons, sure. The aluminum ions here are also willing to gain electrons, sure. But if no one is willing to give electrons, they're just sitting around, wait, if, is anyone going to give me these electrons? If nobody's willing, they can't both potentially reduce. Again, we have no reaction uh, if both uh, want to reduce. There's nobody willing to give it its electrons. So that's why for these cells here, as we're going to see in the upcoming lessons, is when we have a uh, cell like this, 
if we have an electrode made of aluminum, we'll probably have ions. If we have an electrode made of lead, we'll probably have ions. One of these is going to do the oxidation, one does the reduction, so the electron can actually be transferred. Okay. So let's just flip over the case here. Uh, let's examine two more interesting cases here. Let's do the mix and match. Again, usually we don't see this. Usually if you have my metal plate here is aluminum. They're indicating it's solid. This is an electrode. This is a temporary conductor for us. So we have aluminum and we have Pb plus 2. Would there be anything that happens? Right. Well, let's take a look. Again, we're on our table. I'm looking for exactly Pb plus 2 and exactly aluminum. Okay. So let's go to our table. Let's pretend we didn't do this yet. Okay. You're going to start from the bottom left and go upwards. I'm going to have Pb plus 2. Oh, great. I have Pb plus 2. This one here is willing to uh, reduce, no problem. Start from the top right. These are the best guys oxidizing. I have aluminum. Perf. Perfect. This one here actually wants to go to the left. Perfect. Because my reduction is occurring below uh, the oxidation reaction, I expect this to be spontaneous. Sure, the reaction is going to happen. So I can write those reactions out for you again. The aluminum is going to ditch the electrons, become Al plus 3. I was telling you these Al plus 3 have nothing to do with the aluminum that was initially in solution. Earlier we had purposely added aluminum. It has nothing to do with that aluminum. This aluminum plate is actually going to physically create more aluminum ions in solution. It's going to drop off its electrons, and the lead is just going to swim up close to this plate here. The lead plus two ions are going to pick up uh, these electrons and solidify to become Pb. We can actually make a physical observation at what, at what happens to this electrode. We can say the mass of this electrode increases because it's actually being plated out. It's actually solidifying uh, lead on its surface. So we actually didn't need the lead plate. We didn't need the... Um, uh, aluminum ions initially because those are spectators. What if we had that situation? What if we had just a lead plate and we have aluminum ions in solution? Again, you can check your table here. Okay, uh, You're going to start always from the bottom left. These are the best guys at um, reducing. You're going to first run into Pb plus 2. I don't have Pb plus 2. You need to skip it. You're going to run into eventually Al plus 3. Sure, this guy here can reduce. That was at that voltage, I believe it was negative uh, 0. Uh, sorry, 1.66 volts. That was what was quoted at. This time I have Al plus 3. I did not have Pb plus 2. I had to skip over it. Then I start from the top right and start going downwards. I had to skip over aluminum. I don't have aluminum plate. I'm going to run downwards. Okay, I see the Pb, and the Pb can actually oxidize. Potentially this could happen, but if you take a look at the voltage, on the table it's written as a reduction potential. On the... Um, this table here is written as 0 0.13. If I tried to undo the reaction, if aluminum here wanted to actually gain electrons, so one-way arrow, becoming aluminum, that is going to be a negative 1.66 volts. It's not favorable against it. It's not spontaneous. For the PB, I need to reverse the reaction. I need to read right to left. As PB tries to ditch its electrons, becoming PB plus 2 and 2 electrons, I do flip this voltage. This voltage is now going to be a positive 0 0.13. But you'll notice that the total, even after balancing, the total voltage would now be negative one, uh, 1.53 volts. Whenever this is a negative, it actually implies it's non-spontaneous, so there's actually going to be no reaction. So potentially, yes, I could have had, oh yeah, I have one guy reducing, one guy oxidizing, but they're not good enough to transfer electrons uh, in a spontaneous manner. Okay. So here's a summary. Uh, reaction will be spontaneous only if there's one of each. I have to have one guy that's willing to be uh, reduced, one guy that's willing to be oxidized, and we checked on the table, we will always have a positive voltage if your reduction occurs lower than your um, oxidation reaction. So the equation for your half reaction going to left to right has to happen before the one that's going right to left. In this case here, it was opposite. In this case here, the lead was trying to oxidize after we had already crisscrossed there, so therefore it would be non-spontaneous. So uh, I'll let you practice your way through different combinations. Be really careful with what you look for. So for example here, I'm just going to hint at how you do this uh, first one. Take a look at table 24. Uh, you're going to find copper in a few different places. So let me just hint at where uh, all the copper places that you'll end up seeing. Uh, you'll see sort of midway in the table, you'll see copper plus 2 and 2 electrons. It's written as a reduction. Right? We want to test whether it actually does get reduced. That happens at a voltage of 0 0.15 volts. Uh, two rows lower than it, we see another copper, copper plus two, uh, two electrons. Uh, this one here becomes Cu. Sorry, this one's just one electron. 
Uh, this one here happens at a voltage of positive 0 0.34. We even run into uh, copper one more time here. Right, Cu plus an electron. Uh, this one here becomes uh, just copper at a positive 0 0.52 volts. The question is, which copper do I use? I want you to be careful. You need an exact match. Okay? So, so far, I would start from the bottom left because those are the best guys at reducing. I want to find exactly Cu solid. So I'm going to start coming up from the table. I run into Cu plus. Nope, that's not Cu solid. Skip it. Oh, I don't run into Cu pl two plus 2. That's not an exact match. Skip it. Even though those are chemically speaking copper, they're not in the right oxidation state. So far, I haven't found a match yet. I want to look for exactly the copper metal. So I see copper metal here, copper metal here. Uh, how about the zinc reaction? The zinc reaction is a little bit higher than it. We have zinc plus 2 and 2 electrons, also written as a reduction reaction. This one here is at negative 0 0.76. When you're looking for an exact match, you want to look exactly for Zn plus 2. I see exactly Zn plus 2. I do not have solid zinc. So if I'm checking my table, start from bottom left and go up. I don't have any of these copper ions. I have zinc plus 2, though. Uh, that's the reduction reaction that occurs at negative 0.76. Start from the top right. Those are the best guys to oxidize. Go down. You have to skip over zinc solid because I don't have it. You just keep going downwards. Oh, I find copper. Once I find your first match here, anyone else is a spectator. Oh, look, your uh, reduction reaction is actually higher than your oxidation reaction. I would predict this one here is non-spontaneous. So you can go through and check uh, the spontaneity of these guys here. Uh, there's just another way of just framing this uh, as we just end off this lesson here. We can talk about this in terms of a reactivity series. Obviously, it's the chemicals that reduce best, the oxidize best, that are actually going to um, act. Uh, the other ones are going to be spectators. So what we have here is uh, part of a reactivity series. Uh, they actually help you out in your data booklet, table 25, one table over. They actually hint for you uh, this is the relative order. So uh, on the notes here, I've just picked out a couple of these for you. We have magnesium, we have zinc, iron, uh, lead, copper. You don't need to memorize these. This is already on your data booklet. But basically what it's hinting for you here is increasing activity. These ones here are all solid metals. Between oxidation and reduction, what could they do? Well, they can get oxidized. The Mg can become Mg plus 2 and 2 electrons. The zinc can become Zn plus 2 and 2 electrons. All of these guys here want to oxidize. That means we're talking about increasing uh, the strength as reducing agent. So increasing uh, reducing agent strength. It's I increasing the ability to uh, oxidize. Pretty much what this is doing is this is looking at our table again. And this is actually just, let's compare uh, magnesium, zinc, iron. If you check your table, the guys that are going to oxidize on the right-hand side, I see magnesium, I see zinc, a little bit lower, I see iron. They're basically just looking down the one side for you here. Well, if the best guys oxidize are in the top right corner, as you go down, if I have magnesium, zinc, and iron in the same solution, of course, magnesium reacts, the zinc and the iron are just going to be spectators. So the activity series is actually basically just a zoomed-in way of this and also just lists for you in order which ones actually potentially give you the oxidations with the uh, highest positive voltages. So we have them here. This is actually the activity series we use in a single replacement reaction. So let's say for argument's sake here, what would happen to a strip of iron metal if it were placed in copper NO3? You notice that this one here is a single replacement reaction. One guy by itself and one guy uh, that's coupled up. We would check is iron more active? The activity series that we saw last year was actually a simplification of this redox table. We're actually fighting here. We have iron. Iron is potentially solid. Uh, copper is a plus 2. We want to get it to, let's say, iron plus 2 and, let's say, copper solid. It could even be iron plus 3. I'm just guessing here. But what we're doing is we're saying, okay, if iron or copper, who is the more active metal? You look on the chart here, increasing activity is just higher up. Iron here is actually higher. Uh, copper is down here. Anyone that's higher up, if you remember from before, higher elements can displace or kick off lower elements. Right? So what that says is, yes, there is a reaction. Yes, iron is going to swap places. The metal switches places inside. We are going to end up with the compound maybe Fe, NO32, maybe even F NO33. Not sure. But copper ends up getting kicked off. This is a one-way arrow. It's single replacement. So single replacement reaction is actually a redox reaction. It takes the elemental form zero to the charge form. 
And in fact, you can even think about it this way. Why couldn't this reaction go in reverse? Why couldn't the copper steal uh, the nitrate back from iron? In this case here, we potentially have two guys that can oxidize. Iron wants to oxidize, copper wants to oxidize. Who wants to oxidize more? Obviously the one that's stronger. So iron is higher up on the table. Iron is better. You can write this down for yourself here. Iron is actually a better reducing agent. It's better at oxidizing the copper. The stronger team is on this side, they're going to kick whatever equilibrium over to the right-hand side. That's why the reaction is only going to, to go left to right and not going to go uh, right to left. Okay. So I'll let you try out for the bottom here. Use this activity series, see if that happens. Uh, I want to do, finish off with the activity series. What about the non-metal side? What if non-metal wants to single place non-metals here? If you remember from your periodicity chapter here for your halogens, halogens try to react by gaining electrons. In general, we're looking, that's our word, reduction. The property we were looking at was a guy called electron affinity. And we found that all electron affinities, first electron affinities are actually negative, all are exothermic, but electron affinity depended on the size. So fluorine is two shells, chlorine, chlorine is three shells, bromine is uh, four shells going out from there. If I'm going to add an electron to each of these ones here, which is going to want the electron most? Because the electron needs to be stabilized by the positive core, if we think f is equal to kq cube r squared, right, the one that's going to have the strongest attraction, the strongest force, is going to be the one that has the smallest radius. So in this case here, they don't need to give me a chart. Oh, by the way, the non-metals, fluorine is most active, and yada yada. Uh, we actually have, going from the smallest radius, it has the uh, most uh, exothermic electron affinity, so therefore the activity actually decreases going uh, down group 7. So they don't need to uh, give you this order here, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, because I know that the size uh, actually increases, uh, we actually have uh, decreasing activity as we go downwards. So in the same fashion here, if I have a uh, single replacement reaction, if I'm higher up on the chart, I can kick off anyone lower than me. This would correspond with some color change. Let's see if you remember that uh, from a previous C chapter as well. Okay, So just practice through some of these questions here. We'll do a lot more with this table work on the next lesson. Thanks, guys.